In today's video, we're deciding, is the Stella tank build better than the Mysterious Warrior version of it? I ran 40 replays, I've got data to back it up, and some explanation of why Stella is the better main. Greetings, Commanders! This is the Stank Stella build. It's basically the Mysterious Warrior lockdown build, but there was a little bit of a debate on is Mysterious Warrior better with Wings of Eternity or is Stella better with Mysterious Warrior's dual blades? The whole point of the build is to use Wings of Eternity to trigger dual blades to shut down your opponent and then stack a bunch of accuracy and then beat them down with tear space. Basically, you run damage reduction to survive. It's a tank build, but... It is susceptible to one thing, Cassiopeia. I mean, Cassiopeia destroys this build. The whole point of the build is to stop your opponent from triggering their own terror space, their own skills, their own gems. Um, all the while, you're just hitting them over and over and over with Wings of Eternity and terror space damage. So, anyway, the debate has been, is it better to get Mysterious Warrior and then augment Wings of Eternity to level 30, which is cheaper than uh, taking Stella to S-Class and then getting Dual Blades level 30. Well, as it turns out, with the Augment skills, the fourth skill, like Steam Cannon, Wings of Eternity kind of gets full value at level 1. Now, now, the higher Wings of Eternity is, the harder your combat damage is. But in our case, we don't really care about the combat damage because in this build, combat damage makes up 1% to 3% of our total damage, okay? All we need to do is just land the hit, then we get all of our damage, the other 99% from Tear Space. So it doesn't matter if Wings is 1 or 30. It only helps just a little bit, a marginal amount. So what you're really getting by having either Stella or Mysterious Warrior is do you want Stella's Dizzy 20% skill that lowers your opponent's accuracy and attack? The answer is yes because you're a tank build, and the, the more tanky you are, the more troops you have survive, the more tear space damage you do. It's a damage reduction HP build. You're trying to survive here. Okay, so this skill, even though it's 20%, we don't get too excited about these skills, uh, it actually gives more value because Wings of Eternity gives it more chances to trigger, and this affects all of our opponent's slot. Okay, of course, it does get debuffed by Cassiopeia. However, that doesn't matter because if Cassiopeia triggers, we're going to lose anyway. Okay, so it's, yeah. So when you look at a skill like uh, Mysterious Warrior's Double Edge, you get value for Double Edge every time he lands an attack. And he lands a lot of attacks because you have a pure accuracy build. The problem is, is if you have this skill and you hit and kill, uh, attack your opponent and kill two or three troops, okay, this is going to let you kill four or six, okay? But your tear space is going to be doing 150 to 200 troops. So... It, even though you're getting some value every time you land a hit, it's not as much value as Stella's survivability with Dizzy gives you. And that's really the bread and butter. I don't I don't need to go into any more details. I could, but ultimately, when you look at the other skills, like is Dual Blades better at 30 or 60? Well, it reduces their opponent's dodge, makes you hit more. But if you have enough accuracy, you shouldn't need this. You really shouldn't need this. I ran 40 replays, Stella versus Mysterious Warrior, okay? 10 replays as an attacker, 10 replays as, or 10 replays as Stella attacking, 10 replays as Mysterious Warrior attacking. 10 replays of Stella defending, 10 replays of Mysterious Warrior defending. This is all against the Queen Elf build with Crit Wither and uh, Steam Cannon and the Aegis Hall with the same research as me, Hyperspace Level 5. And this is the data. This is the data that backs up the results. And I think that's, you know, it's a spreadsheet video. Most people don't like this, but data is important on meta-defining commanders on new exciting builds. We've been wanting a tank build for a long time. Okay, I've been harping about infantry not having a tank build, and now we have one, and it's good. Okay, so here's what the data says. Okay, so the first 10 replays, I attacked into the elf as Stella, and I won 2 out of 10, 20% of the time. Okay, remember, the sample size of 10, so take it with a grain of salt. Okay, then I did the same thing with Mysterious Warrior, same gear, same build, same everything, uh, also running Crit Wither, even though it could be dodge, don't worry about it. it. The results show that when I was awakening dodge, I had a 10% better success. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, generally speaking, Crit Wither is always going to be better because every other commander you know, runs combat damage except for Elf and yeah, mostly Elf and yeah. Okay, so uh, Mysterious Warrior won 10% of the time. So Stella won 10 or 20 percent attacking. Mysterious Warrior won 10 percent, half as much. Eh, sample size is small. Okay, when I was defending, Stella won 60 percent of the time, over half against the Queen Elf build. Mysterious Warrior 40 percent. Okay, then I went down and calculated how many troops I killed because if like I was losing more battles with Mysterious Warrior, was I killing more troops because I hit harder? The answer is no. Okay, so in the average, right, you got to remember Stella won, and this is a very polarizing fight. If Elf uh, triggers Cassiopeia right off the bat or within, you know, three turns, then basically I lose. And when I lose, I lose convincingly. 
Okay, so you can see I killed 200, 250, and then 2180, which is kind of a weird number, and then 14,000. Whenever I win, I kill everything. Whenever I lose, I don't kill anything and lose everything on my side instead. It's, it's like the most polarizing matchup I've ever seen. If there was a chart of it, it would just be the opposite of a bell curve. Okay, so on average, Stella kills 3,400 when she's attacking. Uh, when Mysterious Warrior is attacking, he's 2,000. Okay, so almost twice as many, 75% more uh, troops killed, almost two for one. So Stella was the better attacker. Fair enough. All right, when Stella was defending, she was average killing 8,500. When Mysterious Warrior was defending, 7,700. 10% less troops, a little bit closer there. But either way, the data is all conclusive that Stella's the better attacker, Stella's the better defender, she gets more wins, she kills more troops. That's the data people want to see. All right, now, of course, I've, I can't end this video without showing some of the 40 replays. So I'm going to go down and show you guys how it all started. Uh, the first replay, right here. Okay, so I lose and I kill 245 troops. I saw that right away and I thought that had to be a first turn Cassiopeia. Okay, so Taurus goes off, Leo goes off, Blessing, Steam Cannon, Cassiopeia. She literally gets everything. Lands a hit, kills 300, Terra Space kills 1,000, and she already has Cassiopeia. So everything I'm trying to do with my build, Wings of Eternity, Dual Blades, has zero effect. And I'm just going to be destroyed. She's already healing. She's going to start dropping curses. Uh, I think at this point, uh, Dizzy has no effect because I'm not going to be able to lower her attack or accuracy enough because she has Cassiopeia that she's basically just going to crush right through me. And you might be saying, well, maybe you'll get lucky and she won't trigger Cassiopeia one round. Yeah, that can happen. Yeah, that and that's, that's how uh, I, I was able to kill 2,000 that one time. So you can get lucky, but there's six slots... So, 20% chance, uh, odds are in her favor just slightly to at least get it once per round. So, that's what happened there. Pretty one-sided, you know, basically I lost everything she lost nothing. You know, it's like 99 to 1 kind of ridiculousness. Same replay in the second one. In the third replay, that weird thing happened where I got a couple thousand. And then in the fourth replay, I won. Now, I didn't even wipe out her whole army. I normally would, but... In this replay, I did get the win. I still lost a, at least two full stacks here, but it just she probably got Cassiopeia in what, second or third round or something, and I and I took it back over. All right, let's show the the mysterious warrior replay when he wins, which means she doesn't trigger Cassiopeia right away, and we can see his damage too. So you can see how how mitigated it is. It, it's it's just a little better than I anticipated, but let's see. It should be all right. So there's the double edge. So here's the basic hit. He kills seven. Here comes the double edge. Fifty nine kills another fourteen. So double damage. So he kills 21 with combat damage and then another 120 or 130 with tear space. So it actually was more like 20% uh, there. So there is some value there, but the value doesn't scale as well as Dizzy. Um, I forgot that his uh, his double strike is not just double damage, it's triple damage. So it's, it's, uh, it's yeah, instead of doing 100 and then 100 again, it does 100 and then 200. So a total of, of 300 damage instead of just, you know, 200. Is that confusing? Yeah, it's probably confusing. All right, so basically what we want to do is, is is figure out if she ever gets Cassiopeia. She definitely doesn't get it in the first three. And Dual Blades needs to start stopping her from triggering all of her skills. Curse, Steam Cannon, yeah. So she's lowering our dodge, making herself hit harder. She lands her hit. She has an accuracy build. You kind of expect that. Wings of Eternity, Andromeda's Radio, uh, Dual Blades. So the Dual Blades goes off, and it hits slots three and one, which were already, were already shut down. So we got unlucky there. So when the first one went off, it disabled slots one and three, I think. And then when slot three went, it disabled slots three and one. So we got zero value out of that um, after slot trigger one. But that can happen. That's unfortunate. What we really want to happen is for Wings of Eternity to trigger three times in a row, Dual blades to trigger three times in a row in the first slot and then shut down all six slots. That's the ideal situation. Then you just crush through Elf for the rest of the round. She just never gets that Cassiopeia off. And that's why the results are always so polarizing. I don't want to drag this replay out too long. Um, honestly, these replays, I, I could spend 20, 30 minutes showing replays. I think the data is what's important here. Um, you know, and obviously these builds are going to adapt and evolve. I, I don't have all the best gear. Um, I don't have the highest level gear. But I think in general, the concept is sound. And that's really what we're looking for. Uh, research may skew things. Higher level gear may skew things just a little bit. But as you get your damage reduction higher... Uh, the better you're going to do. And if you're a walker man, you need to get Cassiopeia immediately because that's the only way to shut this down before it shuts you down, uh, which I think is is somewhat fair. It's pretty volatile to have, you know, one simple gem set fixes everything for you. 
And you might make the argument in Elf's case, if she just runs Tina's super immunity and not steam cannon when she knows she's going against a lockdown build, then she's just always going to win. If she runs super immunity from Tina and Cassiopeia, your chances of winning against an Elf is, is nil. And that's why Queen Elf is the best build in the game. Um, because this build is, is a pretty good rival to it if you're a defender. Uh, of course, Queen Elf gets totally obliterated by Lady and Beast and Black combo. The Beast Black, Black Beast. Ooh, that's a good build. All right, anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. My name is Mel. Thanks for watching.